Hi, Dave here on video three of chapter nine from Absolute Java on Exceptions. Recommend that you watch video one and two before this video. In this video, we're going to talk about the real way that exceptions are typically used in that one method will declare that it throws an exception and the person that calls that method will have a try catch block to catch that possible exception. After discussing the catch or declare rule, we'll look at how to test that an exception is thrown successfully with JUnit. So throwing an exception in a method. Oftentimes, it makes sense to throw an exception in a method, but not catch it in that same method. We want to let the person that called us catch it because they're better able to decide what to do. Some programs that use a method to just end if the exception is thrown. But others might be able to react to the exception and perhaps send a different value down to be computed. The huge point is typically the caller will better know what to do. In such cases, the program using the method should enclose the method invocation in a try block and catch the exception in a catch block that follows. In this case, the call method itself would not try, would not include try in catch blocks. It would not handle the exception. Rather, it would declare that it throws one, and it would have a throws clause. Notice the S on clause. So here's an, an example. This is the division demo, third version. And we're going to have a short main method, it's going to call go. Go is going to ask for a numerator and denominator. And then it's just going to call safe divide and pass it the numerator and denominator. Now the thought here is safe divide is not going to worry about trying to catch any exception that it generates. But rather it's going to send back to go that an exception was generated. So let's jump down to safe divide. Here's the safe divide method. It takes two arguments. Now note after the second argument there's a throws clause with a clause with an S that says, hey, I'm declaring that I may throw a division by zero exception. And inside the method there are no tries and no catches. It is not trying to catch any exception. If it gets a denominator, which is the bottom parameter here, of zero, it's just going to straight out throw an instance of a division by zero exception. There's no try catch here. Now the calling program, go, has the try catch. And inside the try, it calls safe divide. If safe divide throws back a division by zero exception, it has a catch block that is going to catch it and deal with it. So let's talk more about that. Declaring exceptions in a throws clause. If a method can throw an exception, but does not catch it like safe divide, it must provide a warning. This warning is called a throws clause with an S. The process of including an exception class in a throws clause is, ca clause is called declaring the exception. Now the following states that an invocation of a method could throw an exception. So here's my declare. In the signature, public void a method and I'm declaring that I might throw an exception. So it's throws an exception. This allows me, as a programmer, if I'm going to use a method, I know that I should probably call you inside of a try catch block. Now, if a method can throw more than one type of exception, then separate the exception types by commas. So here we're showing two types of exception that may be thrown an exception, comma, another exception. If the method throws an exception and does not catch it, then the method invocation ends immediately after the throw clause. 
So the catch or declare rule. Most ordinary exceptions that might be thrown within a method must be accounted for in one of two ways. First, like in video one, we had the catch rule. The code that can throw an exception is placed within the try block, and then the possible exceptions caught right after that in the catch block within the same method. The declare rule is the one we saw today with safe divide. The possible exception can be declared at the start of the method definition by placing the exception name in a throws clause. So the catch or declare rule. The first technique, like video one, handles an exception in a catch block. The second technique, and the one more widely used, is a way to shift the exception handling responsibility to the method that invoked the exception throwing method. The invoking method must handle the exception unless it too uses the same technique and it passes the buck to the method they called it. I'll show an example of this soon. Ultimately, every exception that is thrown should eventually be caught by a catch block in some method that does not just declare the exception class in a throws clause. So let's go back and look at that example I showed earlier. In Division Demo third version, the main program created an instance of Demo third version and then called Go on that instance. Go in turn asked for a numerator and denominator and called Safe Divide. Now, Safe Divide has announced that it can throw throws division by zero exception. So Go, as the callee, has put that in call inside of a try catch block, and it's prepared to catch division by zero exception. So it's not passing the buck, it's dealing with it. Here I'm showing the example where everybody passes the buck. In this case, Go does not have a try catch block. It has decided instead to pass the buck and declare that it throws a division by zero exception. So when it calls safe divide, if safe divide comes back by throwing a division by zero exception, Go in turn is going to return immediately to the calling main program by throwing a division by zero exception. Main in turn could have had a try catch block. It chose not to, and it in turn is going to throw the division by zero exception. So nobody is catching the exception. Everybody is passing it on. If I run this program, you can see a typical error message in the console. I entered a numerator of 10, denominator of 0, and straight away I get the division by 0 exception. Nobody caught the exception, and I see the stack trace. So what happens if an exception is never caught? If every method, up to and including the main method, simply throws, simply includes a throws clause, that exception may be thrown, but it's never caught. In a non-GUI program, this causes the program to terminate with an error message giving the name of the exception class, like you just saw. But in a GUI program, it's worse. You will not see that error message. Rather, the GUI program could start acting strange or hang in a variety of ways. So the message, every well-written program should eventually catch every exception by a catch block in some method. All right, quickly, let's look at JUnit and how we can use JUnit to test if an exception is being ex successfully, thr successfully thrown. So here in the JUnit 4 quick reference card, card that I gave you, you might have noticed that the test annotation can take some attributes. And one attribute is the attribute expected. Notice it's expected. And it's equal, and it'll be the name of the exception class that we're looking for. So let's go back to our example, division demo third version. And I'm gonna to wanna to test to see if the safe divide method that has declared that it throws division by zero exception does in fact throw it successfully 
if I give it a value of zero for bottom. So I'm going to go into J unit, create a J unit test case for division demo third version. I'm using J unit four. I've asked for a setup and a teardown method. And I'm only going to test or ask for a stub on safe divide. Yeah, I do want JUnit 4 library on the path. And here are the test cases that I created. I do have a private data member to hold a division demo third version instance. I'm going to put in a variable called demo. In setup, I'll create the instance and I'll tear it down and tear down. And I've got three different tests. I've got a test to see if things work correctly. So here I have the try catch block. Since I'm calling the safe divide method and it can throw an exception, I am going to catch it if I have something unsuccessful. Now, if I call safe divide successfully with six divided by three, I have an assert equal statement that should give me a green bar. If for any reason I get an exception back, I should come into the catch block and I'm calling J units fail because I should not have got here. This behavior is not working correctly. If I didn't want to go to try catch, I could have had a test case like I'm showing here for test safe divide two. And I just declare that I can throw pass on the buck for division by zero exception. And if this is thrown, J unit will flag this as a failed test case because it should not have been thrown. The latter one in pink is the one I want to focus on. Here I'm going to call safe divide with zero for the denominator. So safe divide should throw a division by zero exception. So up here on the test annotation, I have the expected attribute equal, I'm, I'm giving it the name of the class that I expect to be thrown. And I'm expecting division by zero exception class to be thrown. If it is thrown, I'll get a green bar. If it's not throw, thrown, I'll fail. So I ran J in with these three test cases. Sure enough, I get a green bar. The exception was thrown when a zero was given as the denominator. It was expected. It got it as it wanted to. I get the green bar. So that concludes video three. In video four, we will see how we can nest try catch blocks within a try block or within a catch block. We'll also look at this other keyword called finally. Have a great day.